So we are happy to take questions, uh, but first I have one for Rahul. Um, one thing I think that our books have in common is some confusion about genre. Uh, some people think my book is a novel, and some readers have mistaken his for a memoir. Um, you know, at least in my case, there's a deliberate blurring of the line between fiction and nonfiction. Um, in Sly Company, there are characters who we recognize from the news, Roger Khan, for instance. Um, and in the excerpt you just read, I believe the letter about Afro Dullaha and Afro Dullahin was at an actual letter to the editor. Uh, so my question is, were you deliberately trying to create some confusion about exactly what kind of book this was, fiction? Uh, wait. Um, yes, I think it was deliberate. Uh, though I think I didn't realize the extent of confusion of my course. And I wonder if I would have done things differently if I did. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, basically there are two aspects to it. One is the, the use of memoir. Uh, I was very keen on this because maybe it was an anxiety of believability or personality. I wanted everybody who read this book to think that every word written in it is things that actually happened. I wanted that friction, friction of agency. I wanted to feel like an independent book, a book you know, that gets this close to its subject. And intimacy is, is losing it in some ways, always. Uh, I think it was, it was gesturing at certain things. I think I was always gesturing at the end. It's a book of encounters. I wanted the encounters carry an energy, but also, as we have seen, as in the way the colonial project unfolded in, in the Caribbean, uh, encounters which created energy, but also a great deal of friction between communities, between genders, between individuals. So that was at the back of my thought when I was, I thought it was a natural theme in the book, explored, and I feel all those words through resonance and echoes. Uh, that was one aspect of it. Perhaps I was also trying to gesture towards something like what Martin Carter said. Order and war. I wanted to implicate the narrator in this. I wanted to manipulate him. And so that all are involved, and then what does that? Or may or may not be consumed with their own board. So uh, that was a price or an advice issue, I don't know, but I wanted the device of the memoir. Uh, there's the other aspect you mentioned is sort of slightly separate from this is the use of journalistic technique and non fiction material. Uh, songs, newspaper reports, accounts of real life people like Roger Khan, mixed in with fictional characters or characters who are developed from life but who take their own life on the page and not necessarily based on models but from general observation and looking at circumstances of, of people. Uh, and I, I realize this, well, this could be confusing. Uh, I think I took permission from writers. Uh, I, I think I read the yeah, Doctor Who's Rap Time when I was in Guyana, a book which famously uses historical characters and plays with them. And Doctor Who afterwards said in an interview that I just look for a I just look for a reliable source for the lie I'm about to make up. And then I discover that it's not a lie, it's just that someone else has thought of it before. Or uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, the great Marquez, peace be upon him, uh, who was both a practicing journalist and a novelist, and he was asked this question about the distinction between the two, and he said, there is no difference. It's the same. The sources are the same, the material is the same, the language is the same. The difference is that in, in journalism, one single, one false fact can prejudice the entire world, whereas in a novel, a single fact can give legitimacy to the entire world. I identified with that. And these were the sort of impulses I was going for. And my ambition was to create uh, an artistic rendering that felt true to life. And so whatever material was available, I was sort of drawn to it. And but I have one for you. <laughs> yeah. I want to say, and it, it felt so true to, to many people that um, you, you got a letter, I think, or a reader communicating with you asking, you know, why are you going to abandon John? <laughs> that's right, I was thinking of that. Yeah, yeah, that's very wonderful. 
Successful at creating this illusion, creating. I have to say, I didn't expect that yeah. question because to my mind, I read this book. It happened in Trinidad, which is my first event in the Caribbean, and the lady came up to me and she said very nice things about the book, but I got to ask you this: Why do you leave the poor girl behind? <laughs> we thought you were better than that. <laughs> and and this messed me up so badly in my head. I couldn't sleep for weeks after, and all the all the different ways that. People would have read the books and their mediations of my text and was not a happy place to be in at all. But the short answer is, no, there is no jam. Yet, I met plenty of people, characters, real life characters in those circumstances. Young mothers, abandoned by men, people who are this sort of gender dynamic and how it might affect their lives and their impulses. And I saw it in a number of relationships, and I had, uh, sometimes I had um, very old women who were husbands of like about 60 telling me about a young thing that you keep in. Sometimes I, see, I saw men who talked about girls they had and how, how the uh, sort of dynamic of those relationships were. I, I met a girl yesterday who had also met a friend for a friend uh, when I was here, who had her first child at 18. Uh, then one a few years later, her husband left her, and then she's got uh, she's relying on someone else now to take care. It's really sort of affected her with confidence, and she was talking a little bit about it. And basically, I wanted to be able to dramatize this thing uh, uh, too successfully or not successfully enough. I don't know, but these are the crevices that fiction allows you to go into. And, if that's not what a novelist does, then what is it that a novelist does? A novelist's job is not to prescribe, not to hold forth, not to tell you, no, do not abandon a girl, or no, do not do this, whatever. I think a novelist's job is to go in there and sort of explore it to see what might happen.